Alright, so we got another news time today, and today is basically just signings. A Capitals player was heading to a college to coach, and some words of encouragement with the racism and the riots going on and stuff right now. Let's get into it. We have four signings we got to talk about today. Two of them were today, the uh, two others were yesterday, and let's go. So Frederick Karlstrom has signed a two-year deal. He's a center. Drafted in the third round of 2016 by Dallas. 10 goals, 19 points, 51 games for Vats Joe Lakers HC. Not that bad of a player for Dallas. Um, I don't expect him to be playing in the NHL right away. But I'm surprised that they held on to him since 2016. That was four years ago. Like, yeah, it's almost around four years ago. A few more a few more weeks and it's almost four years ago that got, this guy got drafted. It's been a long time coming. I hope this guy will get... His little step into the NHL. Uh, after that, Connor Corkinen signs a Connor Corcoran. Sorry, signed a three-year deal. He's a defenseman, drafted in the fifth round in 2018 by Vegas. That was two years ago. Um, 19 goals, 54 points in 62 games for the Windsor Spitfires. Yeah, he was just spending his time in Windsor trying to learn, get that license that we've been talking about in the draft prospects videos. He does seem how he has pretty good stats. 19 goals, 54 points. He's a pretty good scorer as a defenseman, and Vegas could need that. After that, Cody Curran signed a three-year deal. He's a defenseman. He's undrafted, actually, so that's just a little fun fact. 12 goals, 49 points in 48 games for Raga BK. In my opinion, the second best player that is on this list that I have for you. He is... He is a point. He's over a point per game. I know it's only by one point, but still, over one point per, over a point per game. And when you have a player that's over a point per game, that's a defenseman. You got to be Anaheim has got to be thinking, man, we just stole this. We just stole this kid. So I'm really hyped to see what he's going to turn out for Anaheim. Um, Declan Chris Holm has signed a three-year deal. He's a defenseman, drafted in the fifth round in 2018 by Winnipeg, which was also two years ago. 13 goals, 69 points, 59 games for the Peterburg Peets. He was also a all-star. Best guy in my opinion right here. Defenseman with 69 points. That is very solid numbers. A lot of good a lot of good defensemen have gotten signed today. And um, now we move on from the signings to the Washington Capitals assistant coach. Reed Cashman is heading to Dartmouth to coach. He's in he he's a head coach there now. He was in his second season as an assistant captain. I mean, assistant, assistant captain. Assistant coach with um, Todd Reardon. I think that was... Um, I think that's his name. It's not Barry Trotz. Um, so there you go. And then I got a few things to talk about, about the riots and stuff going on. Yes, they're absolute madness. I'm not going to really spend too much on them. But I do have a few things we got to talk about. So... We got players speaking out against racism. I only have I only have Jonathan Tays because that one was really powerful, and people were saying I was getting a lot of notifications. People telling me Evan, you got to talk about this in your news time today, and I was like, okay. And then the other thing that's going on is with Sidney Crosby. Sidney Crosby has not spoken out about the racism or the riots at all, and people are thinking he's selfish. I'm like, first off, I don't like Christ. Crosby. I don't like Crosby. Crosby's on my least favorite team. Yes, I do respect him on this channel, but I don't respect him outside of that. But uh, but I'm I'm defending him here. But like how is that even racist? I mean not racist, selfish. He's just staying silent. Like he does do does everyone have to speak their opinion? Like honestly, like I haven't spoken my opinion. I'm not going to in this video. I'm not going to at all. So Alright, anyways, without that, let's get into the reading by Taze. A lot of people may claim these riots and acts of discretion were a terrible response. I'll be the first to admit as well, a male, as, a, as a white male, that, I, that that was also my first reaction. But who am I to tell someone their pain is not real? Especially when the boiling point had been possible to hold in anymore. It's obviously coming out of a place in truth. The reaction isn't coming out of thin air. I am not con... Condom, condoning, or approving the looting, but we are really going to sit here and say that peaceful protesting is the only answer? There has been plenty of time for that, and if there was an answer, we would have given it our full attention long ago. Listen to these two men debate. They are lost. They are in pain. They strive to make a better future, and they get older, and they realize their efforts may be fuddle. I don't know. 
Um, they don't know the answer to solve their problems. Next generation, black women and men. That breaks my, this breaks my heart. I can't pretend. I can't pretend for a second that I know what it feels like to walk in a black man's shoes. However, seeing the video of George Floyd's death and the violent reaction across the country moved me to tears. It has pushed me back to think how much pain and are black people and other mi minorites, 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 really feeling? What have white, what have Native American people dealt with, both in the Canada and the U.S.? What is it really to grow up there, grow up in their world? I. Where I, where am I ignorant about the privileges that have, that may have, that others don't? Compassion to me is at least trying to feel and understand so, what someone else is going through. For just a moment, maybe I can try to see this world through their eyes. COVID has been rough, but it has given us the opportunity to be much less preoccupied with our busy lives. We can no longer distract ourselves from the truth of what is going on. My message for, isn't for black people and what they should do going forward. A message to white people to open their, open our eyes and our hearts. That's the only choice we have. Otherwise, this will continue. Let's choose to fight hate and fear with love and awareness. Ask not to ask not what you what can you do for me, but what can I do for you? Be the one that be the one to make the first move. In the end, love conquers all. Hashtag Black Lives Matter. Powerful. Sorry about the wind, by the way. Anyways, that's gonna be it for this news time. Thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, do it that like button, subscribe. 150 subs, trying to get to 200. By the end of the year, because it's June 1st now. And I will see you guys in the next video. Stay safe out there.